family, I'm Pastor Tanya. Hey, and I'm Apostle Tyrone McCreary. And we would like to welcome you to Kingdom Life Christian Ministries, where our mission is to connect to God, connect to others, and, and advance, advance the, the kingdom. kingdom. Listen, we are so excited to have this opportunity to personally welcome you to Kingdom Life Christian Ministries, where God is doing so many amazing things, and we want to invite you to come and be a part. Whether it is growing in the Word, uh, whether it's coming to be a part of what we do in our community or helping us reach in our foreign missions, we invite you to be a part of that and to make an impact. So listen, whatever you're doing, make sure that you take the time to get connected with get us because we want to connect with you. And this is something we always say, right, is we want to help you dominate your purpose by dominating your day. So let's dominate together. Hopefully we can see you soon. God see you bless. soon. Good morning. Welcome Kingdom Live to our online family and our family in-house. I am Nadine and I'm here to give you your morning announcements. Welcome to the faith class is almost full. So if you would like to register, please contact Sister Audrey James for more details. And that's audrey.james at kingdomlifecm.org. Wednesday, February 24th, we will be having a RISE ministry. It will be via Zoom, so please be on the lookout. That starts at 7 p.m. Thursday, February 25th, um, we'll be in prayer with our college students. Uh, Stacey Cooper Curtis will be live during pre-show to give more details. Last but not least, Ladies, Women of Worth will be meeting on Friday, February 25th at 7 p.m. We'll be meeting in-house, so please wear your mask. This year's theme is run. We're gonna be leaving all of the hindrances and any objections, anything that is holding us back, we're gonna leave that in our past. And we're gonna be focusing on running, running forward into our purpose. If you have any questions, please contact Minister Eudora Sparkman. That's all from me, fam. Until next time. Hey, we're Team Smith. Hey everybody, we've been married for 17 years. 14 years. 14 years. years. Together for <laughs> 17. Together for 17, just like I said. 14 great years. On top. Did it. Right. Hi, we're Team Long. Yes, we are. We're Team Long. <laughs> and we've, we've been, been married. married. It'll be 14 years next month. Wow. Hey guys. What's up y'all? <laughs> We're Team Lowry. Team Lowry. Also known as Team Marquez. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, we're Team Velarde. Oh. We've been married 22 years. Yeah. And Plus counting. Plus 100. Plus 100. One going to two. How about that? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Did we get it right? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Nose wide open, everyone. Hey, watch out now. Watch out now. Watch out now. Yes. <laughs> you play too much. Now you gotta I'm be spreading the that. Truth. <laughs> How you know I did? I just remember. How you remember? Because I we remember. You was in college. I remember. You said it first, I think. No, of course not. <laughs> Stressor, <laughs> but I get it done though. Yeah, that's my superpower. At what cost? Yeah. I... <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Reading minds. Yeah, finding stuff out. Yes, yes, yes. That's kind of. Kinda yes, of... yes, that is right. She, mm -hmm. she thinks she's a private eye, so just to skip over but all see, the yeah, investigative yeah. work, just I... read people's minds. Hey. Be like, I know you did it. You're telling me you did it in your mind right now. So it's like. Hey, right, here we go. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Questions you gather information to make decisions. Okay, yeah. Yeah, man. Yes. Yeah, put it down there. Yeah, man. It's down there. You good at that. Yes, I appreciate my questions. Praise guys. the Lord. Terrible driver. Okay. No. Ah, please. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Frog <laughs> 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 
Brian, you are telling a tale. You have road rage. So how do how do we compare accidents on camera? Can we pull up so the they want my fault. The insurance People reports. Can we can we pull up insurance reports to verify and confirm? <laughs> That's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, Lord. This see, one, now she want to change the answer. Now she want to change the answer. You see how right no, my answers no. are? My answers are so right that it makes her change her answers. No, hold on. It's really the B-Long stops. If anybody knows about B-Long stops, that is his. <laughs> 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 we just talked about that yesterday. Oh, yeah. My bad. Hey, you look, that's deep right there. You can't get too deep out here, man. <laughs> okay, sorry. That get into the soul. You know, the now. Let's, let's yeah. keep it physical. Okay, keep let's it keep it physical, surface. right? Surface level. Good sorry. Lord. <laughs> ah, you letting them in there. Mm. I don't even gotta look yeah. at it. It's you. The, I wish I put like only, you know? <laughs> He is quick to say sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll be saying sorry later. <laughs> you will be sorry later. Okay, let's... <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're in a church and she lying. <laughs> That's not true. It better not say Brian. It better not say him. Babe, you are, you, I, I there's. Oh, okay. <laughs> My bad. Well, I saw the the R and I thought it was the R from Brian. <laughs> I'm glad he told the truth. Amen. <laughs> yeah. I like to talk about it first, though. Mm, yeah, you be ignoring me. I come back and be like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm processing. I'm not ignoring. That's yeah. the difference. Mm -hmm. I'm processing in silence. Sound good. <laughs> the Lord see your heart. He does. That's why he keeps my mouth closed. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not good. There you go. Oh, um, I definitely love the fact that he is, um, he's, he truly does lead um, our family. Um, we are a blended family, and so there's a lot of different dynamics <laughs> with children and all, and um, he does a great job at that. You know, is very patient with all of us, <laughs> starting with me. <laughs> His heart. His love for people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Even though it gets a little taxing, I love her organization, right? Because I know without it, that'd probably be a wreck. So I love you that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, dang, you, you don't have to agree, like, <laughs> okay, on certain things, I'm especially sorry. on Kim, you don't have to agree. I'm like, sorry, like, you're like, right. That was deep. You know what I mean? All right. Yes. He has a brilliant mind. It's just when he speaks it after he hadn't filtered through it is when we got problems. But other than that, he has a brilliant mind. So welcome to my world of like just confusion of my bad habits or my good qualities or my... The Lord has given me like, the ability to see through them and see the goodness. That that, that's why she just needs to read minds. That's exactly why she needs to read minds. These well, we are Team Long <laughs> and we love you all. <laughs> Signing off. <laughs>
Lord. So you give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken and we say great are you lord you give life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken and we say great are you lord oh great are you lord come on sing this with me come on sing and it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only Sing that with me. Hey, come on, let's say great. Say great are you, Lord. Hey, and all the earth will shout your praise. Hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Do you believe that? Come on. Say all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, souls will sing. Great are you, Lord. And it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. It's keeping us alive, Jesus. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs, yeah. So we pour out our praise. Pour it out. We pour it out. We pour it out. We pour it out, God. Everything that we are, we lay it all down. Lay it at your feet, Jesus. Come on, sing this. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord, with a heart of thanksgiving, God. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Right here, come on and say, this is your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, God, yeah. So we pour it out, we pour it out, we pour it out, yeah. It's your breath in our lungs, yeah. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, Jesus. So we pour out our praise, oh, oh, oh. great. My heart will sing more, oh, yeah. Great are you, Lord. In spite of the chaos, I will sing it. Great are you, Lord. I will sing. Great are you, Lord. 
just take a moment. you are fresh wind blowing this room fresh wind blowing this room yeah fresh wind blowing this room holy ghost fire may the fire on my altar never burn fire on my altar never burn may the fire on my altar never burn make me a house of can 
touch my heart like you do. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And I can search for all eternity, Lord, and find there is one. And now, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done yeah. for us. In spite of all that's going around. And now, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done. For us, give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for He has given Jesus Christ, His Son. We give thanks. With a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One. We give thanks for He has given Jesus Christ, His Son. One more time. And now, come on, say, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor. Say I am rich because of what the Lord has done. Hallelujah for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done. For us, we give thanks. Yes, we give thanks. Wherever you are, just open your mouth and just begin to give thanks. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. Let his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Yeah. I will bless your name. I will bless your name. Yeah. I will bless your name. Bless your name, Jesus. I will bless your name. I choose to bless your name. I choose to bless your name. And this is very powerful. Genesis 126 through 28 says this. We were all made in God's image and God's resemblance. Man was made in God's image and God's resemblance. Another thing to think about, we taught multiple times here in our ministry, is that everything God created carries seed. Everything that has life anyway carries seed, meaning it carries the ability to reproduce itself without the need for God to create it again. Meaning everything it needs to perform or produce is in itself. Stay with me. It's in itself. Also something to consider is that when we were created, we were given the responsibility to exercise dominion over everything but another human. 
Psalms 8 and 5 tells us that we are encircled with God's glory. You've crowned us. God has crowned us with glory and honor. I love this. It really means that uh, we are weighty. Man is weighty. He's full of substance, abundance, glory, splendor. Psalms 139, 15 through 27 tells us, it says, we are fearfully, we're awesomely and wonderfully made. We're distinct, wonderfully made. We're special, irreplaceable, unique, not average. This is what God says about man. This, is, this, this speaks to what's on the inside of us, the essence of who we are, what we've been packaged with. And then... Jeremiah 29, 11, one of our favorite passages of Scripture, tells us that, the, that God's thoughts concerning us are of peace and not of evil, and to give us an expected, expected end. It means an expectancy that a thing I, I, I long for, a future reward. So what's in you, what's in you is expected of God and should be expected of you. You, in other words, your potential, what's on the inside of you, is your future reward. So our potential then is, 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 is our potential for greatness is amazing. All these truths I just shared speaks to or speaks toward our potential and toward our Purpose. Now, let me define something about potential. And we're still dealing with the word adversity, but I need you to think about something because the truth is God is after what's in you. And God has a way of getting what's in you out of you. He has a way that he, if you, if <laughs> I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but the, there's no, you, you can't give glory unless God gets what he put in you out of you. Are you hearing me? And some things we won't voluntarily give because it's painful. If you are an athlete, if you competed on any level and you took it serious, you understand that. The path to greatness is not uh, a comfortable, easy path. Uh, a, a path to, 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 uh, to perform at your peak and be the very best that you can you have to put yourself through some voluntary pain. And you have to be able to deny yourself from certain pleasures. And you go through some unpleasant moments in your life. And, and the path to greatness can sometimes, or to just accomplish great things, or, or to fulfill the dreams of your life, um, can, can also, <laughs> you, you can also expect to experience some miserable moments. Especially if you're doing it right. Now let me, let me define the word potential here. The word potential is having or showing the capacity, there's that word, the capacity to become or to develop into something in the future. It's latent qualities or, or, or abilities that may be developed and led to future success or usefulness. Future usefulness. It's the qualities or the abilities that may be developed to lead to future success or future usefulness. It's like if God wants to get more out of you, he's got to tap deeper into you. Are you hearing me? It's, it's, if God's going to get more out of your life, you have to be willing to go deeper with God. And, and we always tell God, I want to go deeper. But what you don't understand is that that requires for God to go deeper into you. Latent, latent. The word latent means it's the quality or state or existing, but yet not yet developed or manifest. It's what's hidden. Latent means it's what's untapped. It's what's unused. It's what's dormant. It's what, it's, it's, it's what needs to be awakened. It's what's undiscovered. It's what's invincible. Invisible. It's what's unseen. It's what's undeveloped. It's what's unrealized. Y'all going to see this in a minute. There's some, listen to me. I'm talking to the church right now. Church, there's some things that God is pulling out of you right now that you did not know was there. 
There were some things that, 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 that you kept saying, well, when I get to a certain point, I'm talking to myself, this is what I'm going to do. This is what, but, but adversity has caused me, has caused you, has caused business owners, people that are in the kingdom to tap into things that you did not know you were capable of doing in this season. It's forced you to look at the things or to, to be willing to allow God to awaken the things that were unfulfilled and unrealized and undiscovered lying dormant in your life. So according to what I just said, let me ask you a question. How much more of you are you carrying that remains untapped? Unfulfilled? And have you allowed adversity these trying times to cause you to shrink and to shell back up. I want you to write this down. Potential requires development and suitable environments for exposure. Potential requires development and suitable environments for exposure. Potential requires development. If God's going to get to, if, God's a, if you're going to reach that abundant life that you've been so happy to shout about, if you're going to, how, how the scripture says um, that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think according to what's the power that worketh within us. If we're going to see the exceeding and abundance of what God has purposed to do in our lives, then we're going to have to understand that this potential requires development and a suitable environment for its exposure. And this is why you can't afford to quit during adversity. If there's ever time you want to quit, it cannot be right now. Listen, you are at the... Come on, people of God. Listen... Isn't it amazing? Have you, did you ever thought, have you ever thought about the fact that, and this will prove my statement. When the Lord took the children of Israel out of Egypt, he said, if I take them, which was a shorter route. He said, if they see war, if they see conflict, they'll turn around and they'll go back. He said, but I'm going to, so I'm going to take them by way of the wilderness. Why? Because I need an environment that is suitable to expose the potential that's in them. Listen, right, they've been oppressed in slavery for so long. They think like slaves and not like sons. In Exodus, the Lord says to Israel, he says, well, come out. He says, for you will be my peculiar treasure. Are y'all hearing me? My extraordinary people. Y'all remember the quote I told you about? Extraordinary people survive under the most terrible circumstances and then become more extraordinary because of it. God says, I can't take them the short route. Why? Because it will not give them time to develop. I need to tap into some things. That's on the inside. I need them because, because they're greatest. Watch this. Because in order for them to enter into what I promised for them, they're going to have to overcome the giants that are in the land. I'm bringing them to a place of confrontation. Before they can enter into what I purpose for them, I have to bring them to the greatest moment of adversity. I'm going to bring them to a place where there are giants in the land. And watch this. God tells Israel, you go and possess. Now, when God first grabbed them, they didn't see themselves in that fashion. They didn't see them. As a matter of fact, the, 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 and, and this is where you have to be so careful in this season, how you talk. Listen, your current giant might be COVID-19. Be careful what you release out of your mouth in this season. Whose report are you going to believe? 
Do not allow your mouth to be filled with a report that is contrary to what God is saying. What do they do? They get there and they say, we're like grasshoppers in our own sight. It didn't say they called us grasshoppers. It didn't say that those possessed in the land called them, you know, just chumps and you know, uncaped. They didn't say anything. Israel said, when they got there, it's like you said, God, the land is huge, overflowing. Matter of fact, it's, it's too big for us is what they started saying. Right? We're like grasshoppers in our own sight, so we are in theirs. And God said, man, that's an evil report. Why? Because it started to eat away at the faith of God's people. Now watch this. Remember I told you at the beginning, count it all joy when you face different kinds of trials. Why? Because the trying of your faith produces. Are y'all hearing me? God will use adversity to produce to develop a steadfastness, to develop the right environment for exposure. So you cannot afford to faint in the day of adversity. Proverbs 24 and 10. This is what it says. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Hear me. There are circumstances that are suitable for development because greatness requires development and suitable environments for exposure. And you cannot afford, so you cannot afford uh, in the day of adversity to faint. The New Living Translation says if you fail under pressure, your strength is too small. Now watch this. Too small for what? To give birth to your purpose. I'm going to say this again. If you fail under pressure, your strength is too small to give birth to purpose because God uses pressure. He uses adversity to tap into what's been untapped in your life. Many times it's the shell of the outer experience of who we are that's keeping us locked away. And until the shell of us, of who we are, dies, the potential within you can't live or manifest. So don't allow your strength to become your adversary. I'm going to say it again. Don't allow your strength to become your ad adversary. Change your perspective about adversity. Listen, why? Because adversity wakes up potential. Adversity shakes up and awakens what's latent, what's lying dormant, what's lying hidden until circumstances are suitable for development or manifestation. That's what latent means, lying dormant or hidden until circumstances are suitable for development of, or, or manifestation. It's existing, existing, but not yet developed or manifested. There's some things in you that, listen, and I love it because uh, the Bible says the just shall live by the faith, right? And it talks about how uh, it, we, we move from faith to from glory to glory, from faith to faith. Let me help you out. When you move from faith to faith, guess what's sitting in between? Adversity. When you're moving from faith to faith, from glory to glory, uh, you know what's sitting in between? Venture. I remember we talked about that, uh, one, I don't know if it was this new year or the year before, but we talked about how, you know, the reason that God has to give you vision, because there's a starting point and a destination, but in between the start and the destination is venture, and vi venture is a risky journey, v venture is, is process, venture, you, you know, in this venture, in this walk, there's some things you're going to experience that you didn't account for, but you got to be firm in your belief and your walk with God, realizing and understanding that if God brought me to it, God will see me through it. Are you hearing me? If God brought me to this place, God will see me through this place. It, it, that means I was, it was destined to be there. I, it was, I was born for such a time. Are you hearing me, Esther? Such as this. God told him, he said he sent Moses because he heard the cry of his people.
Remember, everything that God has placed in you is in seed form. And God is always after what's in you. What's in you, what you are carrying, and I love this, because what's in you and what you are carrying has the potential for limitless possibilities, meaning you don't even know what God can do with you and through you. You don't even know the sum total of what he's purposed to do. You only know what he told you. There's so much more to your life, and God uses adversity to be the catalyst to bring about transformation, to bring about progress, and to bring about growth in your life. Love this, and if it's in seed form, since the Lord says that the life of the seed is in itself, the seed of what you're carrying has been designed to produce what produces. I'm going to say it again. I want you to think about this. The seed of what you are carrying has been designed by God to produce what produces. What God has placed in you was designed to produce what produces. When you get this, you're going to understand why God always tries your faith. Because what's in you is designed to produce. When you get this, you're going to start looking for opportunities in the midst of this crisis. Because what God placed in you is designed to produce. You, <laughs> Listen, there's a season coming in all of this that if you sit around and you just wait, you're going to miss it. I ain't talking about wait on the Lord. God is giving you instruction right now. What I'm talking about is that you have to understand the nature and, 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 and the nature and the design of your, your makeup is that you, what you carry in you was designed by God to produce. And, you know, it's a shame when the children of this world are wiser than the children of light. I was listening to someone who says more millionaires are made during crisis than any other time. And it's crazy how we as believers, and I'm not talking about just after money, I'm just talking about fulfilling purpose. We, we think that the circumstances limit God's expression in our life when really God uses the circumstances to produce his expression in our life. Oh, I'm going to show you in a second. I'm going to show you in just a second. We're going to be done. Watch this. God will use the circumstances. God will use the turmoil. God will use anything that produces adversity in your life. God will use to expose what he's purposed you for. Okay. Watch this. Adversity provides your window. Adversity provides your window. John Wooden very successful basketball coach, he said this, adversity often produces an unexpected opportunity. Watch this. Look for it, appreciate, and utilize it. This is difficult to do if you're feeling sorry for yourself because you're faced with adversity. In other words, adversity can become what, uh, somewhat of a womb. To usher in what you were purposed and accomplished to do in the earth. And how well you steward the moments of your life. Let me say it this way. The right perspective, a challenging moment, an adverse moment can catapult you into destiny or either leave you stuck in your process. Life, let me also say this too, what you collect in the moments of life can become the fuel or either the parasite to achieving your purpose or either falling short of it. I'm going to give you an example of all of this. Look at David. Can we do this? Um, I told you, adversity provides the window of opportunity. 
Some of us have been waiting on God to do something. And God says, okay, here I am. But you didn't realize he showed up in adversity. You were looking for God. He told you this was your year. You know, many of us heard that, you know, 2020, this is the time of manifestation. And we were like, oh, cool. Here comes the plush. You know, here comes the, 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 the harvest field. You know, here comes the money. Here comes all these things. And then you didn't realize God was going to show up. And God showed up and said, okay, he shows up as adversity. God, I need you to open the windows of heaven. He said, okay, here comes your window. Well, y'all get this. Listen, this is probably going to be one of the most important messages you're going to hear during this time. This is Catapult. I'm telling you right now, God has been showing me this. You have to change your perspective in this season. You got to be sober and sound so that when people are running away, you, you, you're calculating. You're considering. You're, you're looking for opportunity. You, 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 you're, not, uh, you're not complaining about what's going on. You, you've been in prayer. You've been saying, God, I need you to reveal what's in me. Is this my season? Is this my time? God, tap into the untapped. I realize you're trying, you've been trying to go deeper from the beginning. God, this whole entire time in this wilderness, you've been trying to show me sides of yourself that I can build my faith on so that I will not be moved when it's time for me to move into what you call me for. Come on, you've been trying to show me that you are Jehovah, Jehovah Shammah. You're there. You've been trying to show me that you're Jehovah Rapha. You've been trying to show me that you're my healer. You've been trying to show me you're my banner. You've been trying to show me. This is what God was showing them in the wilderness. You're my righteousness. God, you've been trying to show me, and you've been trying to get me to tap into. You've been trying to expose the things that you've already placed on the inside of me. God, right now, this people of God, let me tell you, when we talk about arise and shine, this is your window okay 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 you don't think that that's how God operates okay um and, and let me let me tell you this too before I, I go into this you you got to be prepared to maximize in this season I think that that's also what God is trying to get out of us because if he did if we did not slow down we wouldn't consider it's usually when you're moving, you're overlooking what you have. Some of us have been praying and asking God to do things in our life and, and asking God to give us stuff that he said, you really don't need to do what I want you to do. <laughs> it's I've already put it in your hands. I've already put it in your house. I've already put it in your head. You already have it. You just need to be faithful to the moment. You just need to be ready to maximize the moment. You just need to change your mind concerning the things that you're going through and stop looking for a way out and start looking how to occupy in the midst of it. You know, the church, we're notorious for, we got, we, as soon as adversity hit, the Lord come. Come on, Lord, take us out of here. And God is saying, if I take the light out every time it gets dark, how can I show forth my glory in the world with the very thing I purpose to do? No, what I need you to do is to wake up. <laughs> oh, you need to slap your neighbor. Don't slap him hard. Just a high five or something. Just say, wake up. Potential requires adversity in order to be maximized. The truth is, adversity is an opportunity for you to discover you. Okay, Jeremiah, y'all remember that? I can't do this, God. It's, this is too big for me. We're about to get taken to captivity. God says, say not that you are a youth. Let me tell you about yourself. You were ordained for this, <laughs> for the uprooting, the tear down. You were ordained this day a prophet to the nation. Are you hearing me? It took adversity for him to be introduced to himself. I knew you before you were born. Now it's time for me to introduce you to yourself. Come on, somebody. That's what God is looking to do in this season is to introduce some of you to who you are. You don't believe me? Ask Gideon. Remember that? Gideon, what are you doing in the wine? He's hiding. But notice what God says to him. Hey, mighty man of valor. Let me let me introduce you to yourself. <laughs> Yeah, 
You know, it's truthfully, in the midst of adversity, you'll discover how committed you are to yourself. You'll discover how, you committed are to pe- how committed you are to people, how committed you are to purpose, and how committed you are to your dreams. Let me give you some examples in Scripture how adversity brings about defining moments in your life so that you have something to take away from. Now, I want to remind you of something for those that are part of, you know, King Life family. You've been with us for a while. Let me remind you that everything you need to overcome any season of adversity is either in your house, in your hand, or in your head. Everything you need to overcome adversity in any season, anything you need to, so for the exposure of your potential is either in your house, in your hand, or in your head. I want you to write that down. Everything I need to fulfill what God has purposed me to do. Some of y'all get this, you're going to stop looking at circumstances and saying, I'm not going to be able to accomplish this because this is gone now. I'm not going to be able to do this during this time of of crisis because I don't have, I'm just going to take my little cruise, my little meal and cruise oil, and I'm just going to eat this and we're going to die. Anything you need, I love it, to fulfill what God has purposed you to do is either already in your house It's been in your hand or it's been in your head. It just needs the the right environment to expose it. Okay, I'll give an example. Exodus 4, 1 and 2. Watch this really quick. Exodus 4, go with me to Exodus 4, verse 1. Prayerfully, y'all are all right with me. We're just, we're going to come into our descent. Exodus 4. I got a new Bible. Exodus 4, starting at verse 1 through 2. I want to read this. It says here, Then Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say the Lord has not appeared to you. This is when God tells Moses, I want you to go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And so Moses says, well, what if they say you're not with me? Watch this. So he says, so the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? (laughs) Now, now watch this. What is that in your hand? And God used what was in his hand to work every plague. Okay, watch this. Exodus 14, verse 13 through 15. Look, watch this. Look there, let me just say it this way. One of the greatest testimonies that we've ever heard concerning Moses came through what was in his hand. Okay. Verse, <coughs> Exodus 14, verse 13 through 15 says this. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And watch this verse 15. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Watch this. Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Verse 16. But lift up your rod and stretch out your what? Hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. God says, what is in your hand? Now watch this. Let me say this. This is the revelation behind it. Don't discredit what you worked with on the backside of the desert. Because it could be the very thing God used to fulfill his purpose in your life. 
Are y'all hearing me? Moses, the same shepherd staff that Moses worked with in his broken and night season. Remember we talked that, right, about being broken, blessed, given. Moses was blessed. He was drawn out. He was taken, right, raised in Pharaoh's house. Then he was broken. End up killing someone who was, was uh, one of the Egyptians, taskmaster, that, that was beating one of his fellow brothers. And then Moses now goes from being in the palace to actually on the run. And now he's taking care of sheep on the backside of the desert. He's using a shepherd staff. Let me tell you something. Do not discredit what you work with in your insignificant times in your life. Because it could be the very thing that God's going to use to produce his glory in your life. God going to use that in the season of your come up. It's in your hand. Come on, tell somebody it's in your hand. See, this, this is about being who God purposed you to be. I'll give you another one. David is at home taking care of his father's sheep. And uh, he sent... He sent to battle to give his brothers food. Now he sent as a shepherd. He sent as a shepherd. I mean, he was actually overlooked when it came time to when God sent uh, Samuel to anoint the next king. Even when he gets there and he asked them. Hey, what's going on? What's happening? And they're like, hey, Goliath's coming out and he's taunting uh, the, you know, the children of Israel. He's trying to call us out. And then David says, well, you know, what, what's, what's the reward? What's going on? Watch this. Watch this. Now, remember I told you that it's what you collect during these moments in time that will either catapult you or cause you to become stuck in life. Watch David. Hey, what's going on? Well, you know, uh, the king says that whoever will go out and f- defeat this uh, huge giant. This is, this is an opposition that we have yet to see in Israel. Everybody's fearful. Everybody's afraid to go out and to face this giant. And David says, well, what, what's in it? What, what's the reward? Watch this. Look, what's the opportunity? You see, everybody else was panicking in this time of crisis, but David had learned some lessons about adversity. Now, let me tell you something. You don't always get to choose your moments when you're facing adversity, but you can choose your response. Are you hearing me? And so when, when, when David was as a shepherd taking care and being faithful in that season of his life, he said, hey, when the lion came, God delivered him into my hand. And when the bear came, God delivered him into my hand. And so shall God do to this uncircumcised Philistine. He will deliver him into my hand. Notice how he used every fateful moment of his life where he faced adversity and he developed. He developed and he took, he realized that every adverse moment became a suitable opportunity for him to realize or to learn another part about himself, what God can do, what God is capable of doing with a faithful servant who recognizes covenant. Are y'all hearing me? Who recognizes that I am in covenant. I'm a covenant child of God. I am part of the family of God. And so shall God do with this uncircumcised. So now watch this. So Saul goes, okay, well, you're going to fight him? Here, take my armor. So David puts on the armor and said, man, I, I, can't, I, I haven't proven this. I haven't worked with this. This is not something I'm comfortable with. And let, let me say this to you, because so many of us, you, we, stop comparing yourself and your capabilities to other people. Because really what David was saying was, So I can't do this. Let me just be myself. I need to face this with the knowledge of all my prior moments of adversity. I'm not going to go into this new season trying to copy or use your equipment. Because God never, I didn't use that. So watch this. So give me what I've already been working with. The scripture says he took his staff his slingshot and grabbed five smooth stones. 
And then he ran. I told you it's already in your hand. He ran toward Goliath and all it took was one. Now, do you see here how God used a moment of adversity to expose David? Now, I ain't talking about negative. I'm talking about bring exposure. It was the Goliath moment. Y'all ain't hearing me. It was the adversity. It was that if it had not been for that moment in David's life, and, and let me help you out, had it not been for his faith developing over time, I told you, you need to be faithful to every moment of adversity because it gives you testimony of who your God is and it allows your faith to become established on that thing so that when the next moment, because listen, if God's going to take you deeper, there has to be more adversity. And so when everybody else is running, you've already calculated how you can step up. You already calculated how you can come up. Y'all ain't hearing me. You better be looking for the come up in this hour. Where everybody else is running, you need to be reminding yourself that God did this for me in the past. God did this in this situation. God kept me in that situation. And the same God, I know that this giant is much bigger, but he will be no different. Because in the sight of my God, it's all the same. Now watch this. So after David goes out, his Goliath right in the forehead, boop, drops him. He takes his sword, Goliath's sword, cuts his head off, brings it to Saul. But you got to stay in the text because in 1 Samuel 17, uh, verse 54, it said, he brought the head of Goliath to Saul, but he put Goliath's armor in his own tent. Y'all ain't hearing me. This is what you do with moments of adversity. He brought the head for his reward. <laughs> Look, they scared, but I'm going to come up on this. So here you go, Saul, because now my family's debt free. I get to marry into your house. We're going from rags to riches on this thing. So here's the head. Now give him, give him my reward. But he takes the armor of Goliath and puts it in his own tent. Why? Because this would become another defining moment in David's life that he would watch this, he, he, that he would select as a testimony that would expand his capacity. So now it's not just the lion. Now it's not just the bear. You see how I told you capacity, determination and resolve now. But I'm going to build my look, now I got another story. Adversity. Oh, my God, man, it, it, it what it'll do for you is it will tell your story. You're reading about David's life because of the adversity he faced. Not just David. I could use the widow of Zarephath we talked about, right? Elijah came. He said, hey, look, before you do it, give me what, just give me a little bit and what you have. Well, I only got a little bit, a, a, a little bit of grain. Well, get, fix me some first. And it was what she had in her own house that God was able to use to make sure that she didn't run out of grain the entire time during the famine. I'll give you another one. What about the widow woman who came to Elijah and her pot of oil? In 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, verse 2, she came and she said, Lord, please, I need you to help me with my sons. And he says, what do you have in your house? She said, well, I only have a little bit of oil, a little jar with a little oil in it. He said, well, hey, bring it here. Go out, fill as many jars as you can, to grab as many as you can and keep pouring. Why? Because God, when it comes to your purpose, when it comes to what God wants to do in your life, either, either it's already in your house, it's already in your hand, or it's already in your head. I'll give you another one. What about uh, Shamgar? A lot of people look over him. King Lai, we talked about Shamgar. Shamgar in Judges 3 through 31 and Judges 5 through 6 through 8, he used is an axe goat. Now, an axe goat was a farming tool. It was a, they used it in the plow field. It was had a wooden rod. It was a wooden rod, right? That was about five to 10 uh, feet in length and up to two inches in diameter. And, and, and it was used to prod the animals into work. And then at the end of it was a sharp point on the other end, like a chisel to help clean uh, the plow of clay on the roads. And the scripture says, Watch this, that he actually defeated the Philistines with a farming tool. Are y'all hearing me? He didn't have a spear because he didn't need one. 
when crisis hits, when your defining moment hits your life, when adversity hits your life, trust, you don't have to look for other stuff. It's already in your hand. God has purpose for you to succeed and to overcome long before the moment. And when it hit, you ain't got to panic saying, I don't have what I, I need to be successful. Yes, you do. You're probably just overlooking it. All he needed was a mindset to maximize and to expand himself in the moment. Sham God maximized the moment of adversity by being intentional with what he had in his hand. His actions led to the fulfillment of his purpose. And so there's an axe goat, a slingshot, a pot of oil, a bit of meal. Then you got the, remember the young boy with two fish and five loaves? You feed the people. The disciples are like, well, we ain't got enough. Jesus said, I tell you what, hey, just do this, do me a favor. He said, just go out and, and bring. So they said, all we got is two fish and five loaves. He took it. Broke it, blessed it, or blessed it, broke it, gave it, and he fed thousands. The shepherd's staff may seem insignificant, but when you're obedient to God, watch this, with what you have in adverse moments, God will use that to tap into everything he's purposed in you. Everything. Let me tell you something. In this season is so important for you to be deliberate right where you are. You didn't show up here. We did a series of teaching called Sown. And wherever God planted you, You have everything you need to succeed, to overcome, to win. Don't spend your time complaining. Don't spend this season procrastinating. Don't do it. Maximize. Come on, say it with me. Maximize. Don't spend time looking back when you should be looking forward. You say, look forward. Yep, even in this season, you should be looking forward. Even during this time, you should be looking forward. But we've allowed adversity to cause us to keep our head down, or to look back and wish we would have done things differently. It's your time to maximize the moment. And when adversity hits, look for opportunity to allow everything that God has placed in you in this season to come forth. Beloved, count it all joy. What I take say? Count it all joy, my brothers, when you are met with trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces God knows that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, a resolve, a commitment, the testing of your faith. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying this to me. It is so vital that you commit to his purpose. For your life. Why? Because all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I challenge you today to go back and to think about what we said today. Study it. Look at it. Look at the verses. Go look through our scripture. You'll find out everyone God's ever used Every, everyone that's ever surfaced, the, the stories, the testimonies we have, the ones that we, we, we preach from and we read from and we become encouraged by are the stories of when the people of God faced adversity and they overcame. 
If there's anyone in this hour that should be able to overcome adversity, it should be the people of God. I just believe this is an opportunity for us to go from faith to faith. To go from glory to glory. Listen, church. (laughs) Even now we're having to tap into ourselves and to discover ways to continue to share the gospel, to be the light. Adversity just challenges you. I believe God, he's he's always, listen, (laughs) had persecution not came to the early church, they probably would have stayed right there in Jerusalem and made one big happy little church. But all of a sudden the Bible says persecution arose and the gospel spread and the church grew out of adversity. The early church didn't allow tough times to keep them down. They continued. They continued. Whatever they had to do, they continued. And and I, I, I challenge the church in this hour. I challenge you. Don't grow complacent. And listen to me. Don't allow social distancing to make you lazy. Don't allow for it to cause you to settle. Stay sharp. Stay sober. Stay sound. Those of you out there that, you know, I know in the church right now, the, with uh, the stay safe, stay home order, many of you haven't even been able to get out the house to share a gospel, to share the gospel. It's funny, I hear people saying, you know, I believe God you had to do this to get us outside the walls. He just placed us in other walls. Like, you can't get outside nowhere. We were stuck. I believe it was an opportunity for us to reevaluate. I believe it was an opportunity for us to say, you know what, wait a minute. Man, my, I was moving too much, too fast. My prayer life, my time in the word, my ability to hear God. But now there's been a reset. And I pray, I pray, I pray that as we're able to step outside of our homes and not just into a church, but outside of our homes, that we would have found new vigor and uh, more determination and a sensitivity to God. And that we realize that, listen, <clears throat> yes, I believe our time is limited. I believe that we are, but we've been in the last days since Peter wrote about it. <laughs> we've been in the last days since John wrote about it. A day is a thousand years to the Lord and a thousand years is to a day. We always, we just have to stay ready. But to think you're just going to go and hide in a cave somewhere and just wait until he comes, you might die in that cave. This is about arising. And times of adversity are times for us to arise. It's where God is glorified. Right? Let men see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. Well, saints, God works during times of adversity. So if you just want to work for him when it's good and it's pleasant and things are easy, you're probably missing them. But when it's difficult, tough times, it's where God does his greatest work. Amen? At this time, I want to give an opportunity that if you haven't given your life to Christ and you desire to do so you're at home and you you're hearing this message or you you heard another message and you just feel like there's a tugging at your heart you feel like God is calling you to himself you have a question you know what must I do to be saved or I want to share with you that the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That with the mouth and your heart a confession can be made unto righteousness and salvation. 
that if you would pray right now, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I need you to save me. I give my life to you. And I want to make you my Lord as well as my Savior. Come into my life. Save me from my sins. I accept you today. If you pray that simple prayer, the Bible says that you shall be saved. And from that point, you just need to lock in. When this is up, find a place to worship where you can grow in your word. Other believers that you can become accountable to. Family. Covenant with them. And then commit yourself to following Jesus and growing and making yourself available to service as he is your Lord. If you prayed that prayer and you want to know what to do next, I want to tell you, go to our website, kingdomlifecm.org. You can clap on, you can click on online campus. And when you do, there's a section there that says, I've decided to follow Jesus. And they give you step by step things on the what's next. And then you can fill out a little form, put your information there, your email, your number, send it to us. And we'll have one of our ministers contact you to share with you and be there for you and help you on this journey, this walk that we have, this venture that we now have in Christ Jesus. Now I want to pray for us all collectively. And then I want to have the team come and just sing, and then we're going to close out. So if you bow your heads with me right where you are, if you're with your family, grab your hand, grab, your, grab their hands. and <clears throat> I want to pray, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that you take the word today on overcoming adversity and how the trying of our faith produces. And I pray, God, that you give us wisdom revelation, knowledge, and a deeper insight. God, I pray that this word become one with us, that we assimilate it, that we feast on it, and that we prepare ourselves not to shrink in the day of adversity, but to stand tall, to look for the opportunities, to look for your hand and where you're working, that we might join ourselves to you. Father, I believe that this is a time and season for us to arise and shine, that your glory might be seen in all the earth, and that our greatest work is yet to come. Father, this will be a season of manifestation, a season and a time where what you, with, with what you placed on the inside of us would now be revealed. Your word says all of creation is waiting for the manifestation, the maturity of the sons of God. That if we reign with you, we must suffer with you. But when we do, you use that adversity to manifest the life that you put on the inside of us. So, Father, I pray that you strengthen your people now. Help us to anchor ourselves firm in confidence. <clears throat> Give us ears to hear, eyes to see, a heart that's sensitive and ready to receive. <clears throat> As you instruct us in this season. And God, we won't run away in difficult times and moments, but yet we'll remain steadfast and unmovable. Always abounding in your work. Use this word today to open our eyes and to prepare us to come forth. For Lord, we receive our Goliath moment. We receive our Shamgar moment. We receive even our Joseph moment. That what you placed in our head and how we've been faithful in every moment and every season. That when the opportunity comes, when our baker and butler arrives, we'll still be in place to operate in our gifts and our purpose. <clears throat> that you might use us to bring glory to your name in all the earth. Father, we love you now and we thank you. And it's in the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. 
and that we worship your name. Amen. Did you enjoy the word on today? Because I surely did enjoy the word on today. My name is Minister Jacobs. And today, you can give your life to Christ. You can be a brand new creature. All you have to do is pray a simple prayer. Because Romans 10 and 9, it says, if you can confess in your mouth, believe in your heart, that God sent Christ to die for you, you can be saved. Pray this simple prayer with me. Pray, Father, forgive me, for I have sinned. But God, I love you. And God, I want to give you my heart. God, I believe that you sent your son, Jesus, to die for me. I want to be saved. Clean me, God. Make me brand new. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, you are saved today. You don't have to go back. You can move forward. If you made that decision, please let us know by going to the KLCM app or clicking the link below and clicking I Decided. If you decided, let us know, and we want to stay in contact with you. We want to walk you through the salvation process. If you want prayer, click that same button, I Decided. Also, if you want to join this amazing church body of believers, you can click that link as well. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.